In photography, shooting is only half the fun. This week, part two of the Mitch Meyer shoot. Let's do it. I'm Melissa New. Yes, I am pregnant and welcome to this week's episode of Frame. Last week we were on set in Mitch Meyer's studio, the incredible and talented photographer from the heart of Salt Lake City. If you have not seen the episode, I recommend you stop this and go right back to frameshow.com and check it out. The amount of inspiration that came from his subtle moments, his subtle comments and advice were extraordinary. Finding yourself in this huge sea of photographers and his advice on being yourself are words that I think we all need to hear. So, equipment, workflow, and post-processing. Let's check it out. Welcome back, you guys. We just got done with Mitch's big photo shoot and it was so exciting for us to be here. I wanted to introduce you to our fabulous co-host today, Miss Kat Palmer. Hello. Mrs. Kat Palmer. Yes. Mrs. Kat Palmer. <laughs> uh, she is a local photographer here in Salt Lake City and she is a an admirer of Mitch and tell us what it was like for you to be able to be here with Mitch. Thank you. Yeah, Mitch, he's great. Holy cow. <laughs> We're talking as if he's not right there. I know. Let's talk about Mitch. <laughs> Let's talk about you. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've seen his work, you know, he's an amazingly talented guy. And to be able to be here was an experience. And I, I just wish that every photographer could be here is what I kept thinking. And what's great is that they are able to be here through this process. And so it's nice to run into a humble guy, especially with his caliber of talent and the things that he's done. So let's talk about the shoot today. It was really nice of you to have all of us here, but how was that for you? Uh, that didn't bother me at all. I just, once I get behind the camera, I'm in my zone. Is there is there anything you would have changed about today or did it go like, um, planned? Before before I came to the shoot, I, I had kind of an idea of how I wanted it to look and I surprisingly nailed it within the first like 10 frames with the light. So one thing that I noticed during the shoot that was, that was fun for me to hear from Kat is she came over to me and said, it makes me feel so good that he doesn't know all the technical things, that he doesn't use all the technical jargon. Do you feel that that's important for people to know? Yes and no because there are some cases where you're gonna need to know some of the technical aspects of photography. I'm more of a visual person, so I have to I have to measure light visually. I can't numbers don't mean anything. What's in your bag? What what do you like to shoot with? What's your favorite? I bought the 5D and then when the Mark II came out I bought that. And then I, I wanted to get lenses that I could use for every range. So I started off with a, a 17 to 40 wide lens, and then I got the 24 to 105, and then I got the 70 to 200, and then I got a 50 millimeter fixed lens that's a 1.4. And then if there's a certain particular shoot I'm doing like today, I'll go rent a macro lens, like the 100. I got the 5D with the battery pack, battery grip, just so I can shoot longer. Yep. And I like the way it feels. Yeah, I can me too, because it it's beefy. Vertically. Yeah. I like the, the full frame sensor on it. Actually, I have the l series lens for everything except my 50 millimeter, my 1.4, and that's, I shoot with it probably the most. The just because it opens up so wide, I can just, it's just, it's lightweight, it's really small, so it's just fun to, Put on my camera and just carry around on my hip and shoot on location or wherever I go. Plus, I love the depth it creates and it just kind of gives it like a surreal kind of feel to the picture. And you can shoot in low light. I like I like artificial light in the studio. I like it for certain things, but I love I love natural light. And chat real fast. What is your style? My style. <laughs> it's um, kind of a urban. Chic, I guess. <laughs> it's got an urban feel. It's kind of gritty, um, but I also can do the traditional stuff as well. One thing that I love about Kat is that she 
She has a, a thought and a theme and a, how, what would you call that? Empowering. Empowerment um, I, to every photo shoot that you have done. Almost everything, yeah. It's, it, since uh, 2007, I have really focused on having a message behind my work. Mm -hmm. And generally speaking, it's empowering women. And not in a feminist sort of way, because I love men. I have two boys of my own. <laughs> <laughs> I love my husband. It's not, not that sort of feminist way, but just an empowerment. Especially because I'm realizing that so many women struggle with self-esteem and struggle with loving themselves. And so a lot of my... Um, my photo shoots with, with my women is just really empowering to love oneself, I guess is the, the biggest message usually behind my work. I think so. it's fantastic. Well, check out her work. It's catpalmer.com. That's cat with a C. Yeah. And thank you so much for being here. So Mitch, a lot of people with workflow, a lot of people don't even know where to start. I usually just open up all my images in like Adobe Bridge or Preview or even like iPhoto or something and I just flip through the thumbnails and I just, I try and just back away and just view them really quickly and I just kind of write the numbers down of the ones that stick out to me. I always shoot raw. Okay. Sometimes I'll shoot raw with small JPEGs or medium JPEGs if I'm just gonna send thumbs or do something with those. On this shot, um, in the raw editor, I usually just kind of mess with the, the lighting, the, the balance. The white balance? I don't do a lot with the exposure. I try and do as much of that in the camera as possible. I'll sharpen it up a little. I usually put a high pass filter on stuff that I do so I don't want to sharpen it too much. I try and do as much as I can in the camera as far as like lighting and color balance. Mm -hmm. I have this this technique I do that, that uses a double high pass filter. So I usually save one copy of the original. And this I is have an a, action. I have a set on action because it's kind of a long process mm -hmm. to do it. It creates a mask that I can erase away the the um, application so I can go wow. in after I apply it and I can erase away parts of it that I want more light to come through. So I'll just mess with this and literally paint like with light. But you can see like on her shoulder like, oh, yeah. oops, how much detail it brings out. Wow. But I mean it can be it can be too much, like you can tell in the hair. Yeah, I do it in a way where I'll do this and then I'll, I'll save a copy of this as something else. And then I'll open up the original. See how the color oh, kind wow. of, this, this is a lot more rich. Mm. So I'll pull this one over top of it and create a layer. And then I'll, I'll just take it down and just blend the two. See this is with the full. Mm -hmm. So using your opacity? Yeah, I'll usually just do it about 40 or 50 percent, depending on how much of that I want. I mean, it's easy to overdo it in Photoshop. Yeah. So yeah, the rest of it is just hewing brush and cloning tool. Mm -hmm. The cloning tool I usually use almost as an airbrush. Mm -hmm. um, I'll take it and I'll lower the opacity of it to like 40 percent. <clears throat> and then I'll, I'll clone a piece of the skin close to what I'm trying to fix mm -hmm. and I'll kind of fade out the dark shadow areas. Mm -hmm. I've used airbrushing plugins before but I just feel like it kills the quality too much. The way I work in Photoshop is I, I pay attention to every little detail so like I'll zoom in like I'll zoom in on her chin as close as I can and I'll, I'll spend 10 minutes on that section. So like on this section I would probably open like the liquefying tool. Mm -hmm. So I'll take this and this part of her chin. It's just kind of a weird angle, mm -hmm, so I'll kind mm -hmm. of pull it in or something, you know, mm -hmm. but it makes a big difference. Wow, yeah. You know, this, cleaning this hair, just this section right there with the healing and cloning brush, I go back and forth, will take me probably t 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. I'll probably go in and blend her makeup a little more. I'll probably have this pink upright clone change the opacity like I do when I airbrush and I'll just um, clone some of her makeup and just kind of spread it out mm -hmm. a little more. It's hard when you're working close to like that black sure. right there because that will literally uh -huh. clone that. So. A lot of photographers sharpen eyes. 
it's like the first giveaway that something's photoshopped. Is you have eyes. these bright glowing eyes and the rest of it just looks whatever. So what is your advice for photographers to get away from that? Is it where you if focus? If you're gonna, if you're gonna you... burn the eyes, just don't burn them as much. If you go in and you do your highlights, it, it looks a little more real. Mm -hmm. I, I stay away from the whole dodging and burning right. thing on the eyes. I use my high pass filled mask mm -hmm. and mask it. And that sharpened everything. It just but sharpens the eyes and yeah, makes them stand out a little more. When I shoot, I usually make sure that the light's reflecting her eye. Like it depends on the shoot, but in this, this shot, I wanted her eyes to, to be a part of it. So I usually either have the model look towards the reflector or towards the light or somewhere so I can see their eyes. Mm -hmm. One of my tricks I do with lighting is I I desaturate. So when I look at a black and white picture, I look at all the different shades of gray. Mm -hmm. And I if I look at, if I am working on a picture and I flip it to gray scale, it if it looks flat to me, then that then I can tell like when it's in color it needs something more to it. Mm -hmm. And I would maybe highlight her face a teeny bit more and I would maybe darken down here more. How, how would you highlight? Would you... Just with the dodging tool. I'll do it on like two, one or two percent. Mm -hmm. And I'll just slowly, gradually like get it to where I want to be. See like that doesn't look like a lot, but when you go back, mm -hmm. it no, just looks definitely. softer. I do a lot of dodging and burning quite a bit of it. Mm -hmm. I just do it really subtly. So I'll go in and I'll darken spots that look flat. Basically, I'll just go back and forth from dodging and burning the shadows. So burning, burning the shadows and dodging the highlights, those two things, I'll go back and forth. And I'll, I'll do them like between one and 3%. And I'll just, I'll go down here like on her, on her arm. Little things like that will really like oh, yeah. pop the picture more than like, like her eye. Like once you like highlight it a little and darken it, it almost looks like, to me, it looks like she almost has a black eye. Sure. Like this, I'll, I'll clean up all this hair. Mm -hmm. I'll take away her piercing. I'll mm -hmm. clean up her skin. I'll clean up all the sensor dust. I'll pop her highlights and darken the shadows. I'll clean her hair up. The point is, is to make it look not Photoshop. Mm -hmm. Oh, he just makes it look so easy. Now, remember, if there is something that you missed or you're confused about, or you have more questions regarding his equipment or even his process, Mitch has seriously been so cool enough to answer some of our questions already. So go to facebook.com slash frame show and click on the discussions tab and then see if your question's already been answered. If not, strike up a new topic and we'll see if he can get it answered for you. Also, Sometimes photographers use terms that we, we might not be familiar with. So go to frameshow.com and click on glossary of terms and maybe that'll help you out. Next week, bring out your sense of humor because <laughs> we've got a very unique and humorous photographer. In fact, <laughs> I'm laughing just thinking about him. We had such a blast with him. He's a photographer shooting in the most simple of circumstances. See you guys next week. And hello, we need to announce the winner of last week's giveaway. It's a very handy dandy little LED light that you can travel and take with you wherever you go, which I'm totally jealous because I wish I had this. So let's announce the winner. Okay, now pardon me if I mispronounce this, but Heather Sellers Birchenall, congratulations. And she actually said something pretty cool on Facebook. She said, very excited about Framed, Mitch Meyer inspired and reminded me of the reason that I am in this industry. Not to size myself up to others, but to follow my passion and live life to the fullest while enjoying every moment. Amen, sister. Congratulations.